blooming gel business. I know it's been around forever, but I've been in denial that it's necessary because you know, you can just drop stuff in the top coat and it's fine, or you can use alcohol inks, it's fine. But I really need another product, like for reals. So we're gonna check it out and see if it's necessary because, like, really, is it necessary? Do we need wooden gel? All right, so she's gonna show us. Do we need it? <laughs> Here we Standard go. Standard prep for any application. We're gonna push that cuticle back. We're gonna remove any of that organic material off of the nail plate. I'm using my pterygium remover. However you choose to do this part of the process is perfectly fine. Just as long as we are not doing any excessive scraping or damage to the nail. Yeah, because natural nail damage is always bad. I've already addressed her free edge. Now I'm going to take my 100, 100, 180 grit side of my buffer and take the shine off the nail. And even though she's taking the shine off with a 180, it is a refined 180. It's not like a really gnarly 180. So she's simply removing the shine, not jacking up the natural nail. Correct. That's something I had a really hard time with, is learning that you can use a 180 to remove the shine. You just simply need to use a refined 180 and a very gentle touch. And then the final step in our prep is going to be our pH bond. Right here in front of me. That's <laughs> what we get for a shared station. Not everybody sets up the same way, but... Yeah, that's part of working at a trade show. Absolutely. And do you use the pH bond with all gelish services? I use pH bond with every single service I do, including a natural nail manicure. Okay. It does a bunch of things for the nail. Um, and removing the remaining moisture and oil on the surface of the nail is just one of the things that it does. It sets the proper pH so you're going to get maximum adhesion of whatever product you put on. And it cleans that nail so that we're not trapping any pathogens or bacteria. Okay, so that's really important. So it's just kind of an extra prep step after your cleansing? Correct. Because cleanse doesn't do all of that. Right. Okay, so now we're going to do foundation and we're going to do color. I'm just going to do really basic. I'm going to do a black background. And we're going to put our foundation on for our gel polish color. We need very little. Especially. And for those of you that missed it, check out the video with Jesse to kind of get a heads up on what the rubber base is, the Foundation Flex. Yeah, Foundation Flex is awesome. So you're just going to scrub that foundation in. Don't forget that free edge, super important. Notice I'm pulling her finger down just a little bit just so that I can avoid getting it on her skin. And we're gonna cure that for five seconds. Whole hand into the light, flat on that metal plate. You always wanna make sure that the whole hand goes into the LED light because if you're not using the whole hand, your fingers are in the wrong position yes. for the LED bulbs in there. And I find it's also important to make sure the clients are tucking their thumbs in correctly or they don't yeah. get a full cure on the right. thumbs. Right, you don't want to be doing any of this stuff. Yes. Or this stuff. Or this or business. This stuff. Right. Yes. This natural, relaxed. Yes. Hand. You almost have to give them hand position lessons the yeah. first time they come in. Yeah. Or if you switch lamps because you have more than one product. So with our uh, black shadow, I'm just going to put one coat and then I'll put my second layer on after this is cured. We want it to be see-through, not necessarily streaky, but um, sheer on its first layer. Again, getting that free edge into the light for me. Now that's 30 seconds, and this is our comfort cure. I am using the 30 second button for this option. You can use the 60 second button. However, just remember that that is only a full 30 second cure. Comfort cure means we graduate power up so that uh, clients that are particularly sensitive don't experience any heat spiking. And that's really helpful because if you have someone like me that just has naturally sensitive skin, 
I hate spike on gel polish. It doesn't yeah. matter what brand it is. It doesn't matter. Yeah, if I, you I bring in pigment. Yeah. And like, I think it's important it to understand it's it's a misconception that the 60 second button is a full minute cure and it is not. Mm -hmm. So people will use that 60 second button thinking that they're getting a 60 second cure and then they're blaming the product. Yes. It's not the product. We're gonna do our second coat of our black shadow. So see that the black is semi sheer in one layer. Okay, I got a little bit in her cuticle, so we are going to clean that out of her cuticle. How long have you been doing nails? Very Yep. I haven't done it only. Two days, well, three I days. I have my own nails, that's about it. <laughs> Are you in school currently? Yeah. For nails or hair? Hair. Nice. Are you thinking about doing nails on the side or strictly hair? I don't know yet. Haha, <laughs> good answer. That's politically correct. She's like, I'm not telling you crazy. <laughs> and use our jotting tool for this next, for the actual application of the color into the um, blooming gel. Okay, so I put just a tiny little bit of color out of my palette. You don't need a lot. Oh, look, I have a little, a little bubble. We're just gonna hide that with a little dot. Okay, so we wanna put an even coat over the area where we want the blooming to happen. Now I'm just going to do her whole nail. Do you seal the nail with the blooming gel or simply apply it to the surface? I do, I seal. Okay. And then we're going to use our dotting tool. Um, I am using the TA04. This is the bent one. I like that one because it helps give me a little bit more control, I feel like. And you simply dot and then wipe it off and then dot. Wipe it off. I dot and then clean it every single time before I add more color. The longer you let it sit, the longer it spreads out. It spreads. So it gives you more control of the color spread than alcohol inks. Absolutely. You can, and you can do, and then, and then into the light and cure for 30 seconds. You can also use a brush and spread it. You can also marble, do different colors and then marble them together in that blooming gel. So it'll give you several different effects. Um, using the brush, you can get really cool shapes. Like you can define a shape that you want and then let it bloom out. So then that shape has almost like a shadowed effect, which is really nice for, especially if you're doing it as a background for art. And then we top coat. I mean, it is that simple. And I'm going to use my top it off. Controlled. We don't want to flood the cuticle. I like to use a really flat application, especially when I'm going over um, anything that may have a little bit of texture. And after you've done your blooming, you'll have a little bit of um, like bumps. Is the black, you know, for lack of a better term. Okay, go ahead and put that in. Again, 30 second cure. Flat brush helps a flub coat and helps fill in the little valleys in between the areas where the colors have been pushed together. Oh, yeah. 
And if you're going to layer multiple colors, would you layer them in together at the same time or on top of each other? Depending on the effect that I want and the length of the nail. On a shorter nail, I would do the colors together. On a longer nail where you have more, more area, surface area. More surface yeah. area. I, you would do, I would like to do layers. That's the, I like to see it done in layers that way. That's really the way I like to do it, but on a shorter nail, you really need to mind your... Yes, you don't have as much space. Your surface work. area, yeah. So fun, and then we always, always, always finish off with our cuticle oil, and we can apply this right to the natural nail and then massage it into the cuticle area. Because we know that that nail surface has been cleansed and is clean and will not cross contaminate. looks nice and Halloweeny. Yeah, you can make, you can definitely make ghosts. That's what I was referring to when you when yep. you're using a brush. You can kind of define a shape and then let it spread out and then add little details to make it whatever you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? I like it. All right, I may need it. <laughs>